today with me on candid conversations is uh, a very uh, fascinating personality he's lived a very charmed life a very interesting life he's also led a very complex life uh, which of course he's outlined in his uh, beautiful beautiful autobiography called stories i must tell with me is kabir bedi and uh, kabir bedi he's acted in bollywood he's acted in hollywood uh, he's acted as the henchman of a james bond villain uh in hollywood he's also got a psychotic i think that is the word psychotic i am following in italy where he's played this uh, pirate called sandokan right and apparently apparently this is what i've read in old old issues of film magazines there used to be uh, long lines of women and he used to be uh, uh, signing all over them anyways over to mr bedi uh, mr bedi welcome to the show thank you for welcoming me with such lovely words um yes uh italy certainly was the site of one of my biggest uh, successes the country that's given me the most fame and honor uh i've also done many things beyond sandro canetti many other mini series and films which got me knighted by the italian republic but basically my relationship with italy is very deep and profound and they've done some amazing things for me and with me Right, and you know, uh, early on in your book, I, I was really intrigued by something which I read. Uh, there was this uh, phase in your life when uh, you know you were you were a journalist, and you asked John Lennon about LSD, and then you went ahead <laughs> later on. Apparently, you asked Elizabeth Taylor about the men who she slept with. What exactly was going on in your mind at that time? You know. <clears throat> the my interview with the beatles actually is the first chapter in my book because it yeah. is really one of the pivotal turning points of my life and i was a student in delhi university working with all india radio because i had to pay my way through college and when i heard the beatles were in town i was just over, overwhelmed and determined to get to them as any mad fan would want to and i persuaded my bosses who laughed at me saying i'll get this interview um how i got that interview is all in the book what happened in the interview is all in the book but to answer your question specifically uh of course the beatles were the greatest people in the world for me not just as musicians because they represented the whole of the 60s the whole change of social environment sexual revolutions social revolutions revolutions in music uh, fashion design it was a time when the whole world was changing and they represented that so it was also the age of hippies and we were pretty convinced that the beatles were stoners um and i asked john lennon about that of course he didn't want to answer that because it, i don't know what the laws are around here young man you're trying to get me into trouble i judge people by their music and uh, <clears throat> but i pushed the envelope i said what about lsd and he got a bit annoyed with me because it those things are very dangerous to talk about you don't talk about those things the fact that i interviewed them certainly is one of the highlights of uh, my early life and and what followed um when all india radio after broadcasting the interview mm. uh, erased it because they didn't have enough money for new tapes so horrified me so horrified me that i decided i don't want to work with these people and with 700 rupees in my pocket i set out to to find a new life in in bombay um so it was in many ways a turning point in my life because in a way i have to thank the guys that raised the tape so i still might be work with all india radio uh <laughs> they gave me the push to leave and to find a new life for myself i didn't come to bombay looking to be an actor i i never seriously considered being a professional actor i loved it it was a hobby and i came to bombay and i worked with advertising agencies yes. uh lintas and ogilvy yes because i wanted to hone my skills as a filmmaker yes and yet because acting was a hobby and my great good fortune in lintas was to have alec padam see as my boss and he cast me in the role of tugluk tugluk uh girish karnad's first great play in english and uh, that became a huge success and that led to bollywood which led to italy etc so it's strange in life how all these things have far more profound effects than you 
realize at the time. At the time. <clears throat> yeah, right. at the time. Right. It, it's all a chain reaction. If I hadn't left Delhi, I'd never found that mm, the job in advertising. If I hadn't found it in advertising, if Alec hadn't been my boss, I wouldn't have got that role. Bollywood might never have discovered me. Italy might never have discovered me. So all these are the what-ifs of history. But the fact is, is that when you when you take bold decisions, when you take chances in life, and you are propelled by your beliefs when you make those chances, great things do happen. Luck favors the brave. You have to be in the war to win the war. You have to be in it to win it. And if you make the right choice at the time, hopefully fortune will favor you. Wise words, wise words from Mr. Bedi. And, you know, on that note, uh, there's this thing which I just wanted to take up. In the book, uh, Stories I Must Tell, we see a lot of making and a lot of unmaking of Mr. Bedi, right? The different phases yep. you went yep. through in your life. So did it surprise right. people who read your autobiography, who, uh, you know, used to see you in a particular light and they said, you know, Kabir, uh, this is a very, uh, this is a very different phase. This is a very different uh, sort of persona of you, which we actually saw. We, where we saw that you did so much of so many other things also. Because you know, when the, the name Kabir Bedi has always corroded up uh, a, a lot of glamour, a lot of glamour, a lot of yeah. fascination. So, did you get feedback like that? Well, you know, uh, it's a very good question you ask, Kabir, because. Nobody really knew all my stories. People in India knew me in a certain way. People in Europe knew me in another way. People in America knew me in another way from my American series. When I had my success in Italy, my series, Sandrakan, broke every known record in European television. It was viewed by 34 million people, so 27 million people in a country of 60 million people, which is a 34% share, which is unheard of today in any television. It just, uh, that record has remained till today in Italy, uh, perhaps Europe. Yet, after all the success, I wasn't getting lots of offers. And um, I couldn't understand why. I should have been inundated. And I spoke to a director who seemed like a very nice chap who I got along with. He said, Kabir, we can't cast you. You are just Sandokan. We make social films, we make political films, we make comedies. We can't have Sandokan walk into our film and ruin the story. And I thought, my God, am I going to be a one, one, you know, a one shot wonder in a country of my biggest success? And it really made me stop and think. Um, and I realized that I would have to push on do other things in other countries which are seen in Italy. So eventually they would realize that I'm not just Sandra Khan, I'm many other things. And in one sense, I got lucky because at one level, I got cast immediately in one other Italian film, which is also a pirate role, but a Western pirate. He wasn't an Asian pirate, the black pirate. It was a precursor of the Pirates of the Caribbean film because we shot in, in the Caribbean, in Colombia, uh, etc. But um, the, uh, I had to do other things in America, even the Bond film, etc., to break that jinx. That was one. Secondly, in my, I spent almost two decades in America. Towards the end of that period, I came to a point where I was actually facing bankruptcy. I actually filed for bankruptcy because things had gone so against me. At a time when I was facing economic, I mean, e emotional devastation as well, because I lost my son to schizophrenia. And all these things just goes to show that no matter how successful a person is, no matter how glamorous his life seems, there's always something that can darken the skies, that can change the scenario. And normally people hide these things, you know? And so did I, I didn't go around broadcasting, I've gone bankrupt, I didn't. I just set about quietly, doggedly rebuilding my life. And one little film after another, I rebuilt it, took me 27 films, but I redid it. Uh, in my autobiography, I'm able to talk about it. And I think that's what surprises people, that there's a, a persona who 
not only has had this glamorous life and these great loves, but he's also um, suffered a lot. He's also had triumphs, he's had tragedies and traumas. I think being able to share that has touched people in a way. Some people said my book moved them to tears. I mean, since we last spoke, my book has now, you know, it's become a national bestseller. Uh, it's won the Amazon Most Popular Book Award. Um, it's, it's gone from strength to strength. There's an Italian edition out. I'm in Italy promoting the Italian edition as well. So something has resonated with people. And that's sort of what I wanted to do. I wanted to make this a very human story, a story full of human fallibilities. Right. And you know, you mentioned you mentioned the Bond film. Now, I, we've spoken before. Uh, I've, I've seen the Bond film. It's one of my favorite movies. You know, Mr. Bedi, like uh, Roger Moore is there and you're <laughs> touching those uh, dice with your... Uh, uh, with, with your with your hand and the, the thing is falling down and I think you, you probably die uh, on or fighting on top of a plane with him if I'm not wrong. What well, I really sir. want well, to know uh, really <clears throat> is you know landing a role in Hollywood is a big thing. Landing the role as a henchman of a Bond villain is another level. At that point of time in the early 80s or whenever that was, there must have been a lot of jealousy back in India of some of the you know actors and established actors over here. Oh my God, yeah. To be cast in a Bond film, in a role of any importance, puts you in a different league as far as the Bond film fans are concerned. And they are a legion across the world. Yeah. They are, you know, they have those, even those who have their clubs, their symposiums, their meetings, their merchandise. Today they have their websites, their um, the online seminars, all kinds of, you get invited to a zillion things and your fan base internationally just explodes. Yeah. Uh, same thing happens when I did The Board of the Beautiful. Uh, that again was the number one show. So these things cause tremendous fan bases to develop. And I had one major one in Europe already. So between that and this, it really helped me uh, a lot in, in my career. I'm going to ask you a question. And I can guarantee no one has asked you that question ever before. Okay. All right. In Khun Bhari Ma, Mr. Bedi feeds his fiance to a crocodile. Then he gets killed by a crocodile. In the Bond movie, of course, there were also crocodiles. In Mohindu Karo, also there were crocodiles. Not many people <laughs> actually remember that. What is this fascination? Have you ever thought of having a crocodile as a pet? I mean, you know, like, no, like, like the to answer your question very briefly, no, I have not thought of that. And to compliment you, I have not made that correlation before myself. So let me compliment you on, on seeing the link and the thread there. Um, yeah, I must think a little more about uh, crocodiles and yeah. their role in my life and whether I should or shouldn't have one as a pet. Thanks a lot for talking to us. Thanks for talking about your highs. And your lows, uh, it, it, it's really something to, you know, uh, talk about it constantly, whether it's your book and all. And uh, for the ones who are seeing this interview, uh, there are a lot more amazing stories which are there in Mr. Bedi's book, in his autobiography. I think he's apparently <laughs> writing uh, another one. I don't know. But uh, for sure, uh, uh, Mr. Bedi, all the best for the future. And uh, thanks so much. Thanks so much for talking. Thank you, Kabir. Thank you so much. And I must say, the title of my book is Stories I Must Tell. But the subtitle, perhaps, is the more important part, The Emotional Life of an Actor. Thank you so much, Kabir. Thank you.